Are you all ready for the video game magazine of the future? Yeah, that's right. VHS is the future. If you ever wanted to be slapped really hard in the face by the late 90s, this Fuse VHS magazine is a great way to do that. This is Fuse, your link to interactive entertainment. So, what we have here is the November slash December 1998 Volume 1 Issue 1 of Fuse Video Magazine. I'll be picking up issue two really soon to do a follow-up video. There is no issue two. This is one of one. Guess the future is canceled. Wow, you guys gotta try this. Cancel. Even though this died immediately, there was some merit to this idea because getting to see actual footage of games before they released is nice. But there are definitely certain sections of magazines that work much better in print that they tried to pull off on this VHS tape. The late 98 star probably didn't help a whole lot either, as it's just around the time more people would be checking out gaming news on the internet and would probably put up with crappy real player video footage for a preview rather than dropping seven bucks on a VHS tape by a magazine they've never heard of. It's also just slightly too early for DVD to have been popular enough to have been the format to release this on, which would have have worked much better for this concept. You can tell EB Games was desperate to unload Fuse by the end here as they dropped the price to just 99 cents to get rid of it. The UK had actually tried to do a VHS video game magazine back in 1991 with Click, however that also quickly failed as it only lasted for two tapes. Still, it's double the runtime that Fuse had. A lot of people too would probably just stick to their regular gaming magazines for this type of info, which was definitely more convenient for some of this stuff and wouldn't cost as much. Well, initially anyway. This packaging is also pretty ridiculous just for a single VHS tape. Had it at least come with some kind of mini magazine, it might have been a little more justified, but it's just a single page leaflet thing. They clearly wanted to have a magazine magazine cover style layout here, but this just creates a lot of pointless garbage surrounding the VHS sleeve. Had they got past issue one, I bet very quickly they would have just cut it down to just the VHS sleeve for packaging, because just why with any of this? It's inconvenient and a waste. The one and done magazine of the future fuse was produced by the UK based company Thin Ice Media, which had produced the UK gaming magazine's GBX, which would come with a VHS bonus and later G-Force magazine where they would include a much more convenient bonus DVD. And having the video as a bonus with an actual magazine is a much better way to go about this whole thing. The parent company of Thin Ice Media was Daytel, manufacturer of many video game peripherals, with the most famous one being the Action Replay, also known as the Game Shark in North America at first, which was originally distributed by Interact, who were also the ones that distributed our Fuse magazine here. What happens when video games and videotapes collide? I don't know, you recording yourself playing video games? Oh wait, no, Fuse is what happens. Plus, Fuse has news and gossip from behind the scenes, also exclusive codes for GameShark. Oh, wow, I wonder how they got those. Hi, I'm Derek. Welcome to the first edition of Fuse. Hey, and I'm JC. We were totally having a real conversation here before starting. I bet those two really hated each other. Or maybe not. I don't know. I have no basis for that. Kind of sad they put together this Fuse set just for the one issue. Fuse is your connection to the world of electronic games. I love all the attempts to be hip in this video, yet JC breaks out the term electronic games like anyone called video games that past the Atari era. And for the occasion, we put together a great show. The occasion of what? Maybe she means because this is their premiere issue they made a great show, and everyone after this was going to be half-assed, so they were cancelled before that could actually happen. We went all the way to Japan to check out Sega's new system. Well, 
I did anyways. Because Fuse couldn't afford to send the both of us. In all seriousness though, the fact they did cover Sonic Adventure's launch in Japan is the most ambitious and worthwhile part of this entire thing. Yeah, well, I actually got to play the new Sonic game. It's kind of weird JC mentions that she actually got to play Sonic Adventure because they definitely try to edit some footage later to make it kind of look like Derek is playing Sonic Adventure when he's just watching video. And Legend of Zelda for Nintendo 64, even the new Tomb Raider. And we got the crazy crew from Game Informer magazine. Yeah, I bet they're just totally out to lunch. There's nothing more wacky than guys from another video game magazine. Kinda seems a bit weird in your first issue to be bumming info out of guys from another magazine. Maybe that's another reason why this didn't last. We'll visit with the Crystal Method. They sort of mention this Crystal Method interview on the front and back, but it's weird because they apparently don't want to tell you who they actually interviewed as it just says the mysterious celebrity gamer. Mysterious celebrities are my favorite. They are too big to be named. This month's Celebrity Gamers. Next month's Celebrity Gamers just so huge, we had to cancel the entire magazine before you ever saw it. Very cool. Yeah. But first, here's Cool Derek with Fuse News. Ready! The revolution happens every couple years or so, and another one is upon us courtesy of SEGA. SEGA's Dreamcast is storming onto the streets of Japan right now. <laughs> Japanese players can also expect RPGs, sports, and wrestling games. Wrestling games. Wrestling games. You're in the N64 era, dude, and you're talking about wrestling games on Dreamcast? I'm sorry, but there was a clear winner on who had the better wrestling titles during this time period. I guess Japan at least had more wrestling titles for Dreamcast, but over here the one sort of exclusive wrestling title was the port of the weird 2000 Royal Rumble arcade game. Which kind of left a lot to be desired, like even having 30 wrestlers to fill the 30-man Royal Rumble featured match. The biggest game for Dreamcast is the triumphant return of Sonic the Hedgehog in Sonic Adventure. Yeah, considering the huge mess the non-release of Sonic Extreme on the Saturn was, Sonic Adventure was a pretty important release for the franchise at the time, and one Sega couldn't afford to Sonic 06 up. Fuse has hit Tokyo. What of you? Tokyo. Fuse has hit Tokyo for the first time, for the last time, and Fuse must follow the rules. And only in Japan will you get to learn that the proper way to plug in your Dreamcast is with your feet. They're waiting for a chance to play the brand new game, Sonic Adventure, Sega's first game for its new format, Dreamcast. Format? you think you'd say new system. Format is just kind of odd phrasing for that. We're two hours away from the doors even opening and yet there's already over 3,000 eager fans. Couldn't be bothered to put in the zero so it's just three fans are here. Waiting for a chance to see what the future of gaming looks like. The future of gaming is a giant head breathing fire at us? I hate this future! From the video game magazine of the future. <laughs> Sonic Adventure, first time seen by human eyes. Those aren't human eyes. D do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about your, your new game? That's no good. Thanks for the honesty, Sonic, but why are you classic Sonic? Shouldn't you be modern Sonic? I'm out of here. Get your programs here. This is going great, isn't it? This isn't a bit. Fuse had to give out programs to be allowed to stay in the building. Uh, this promotion is kind of weird. Can't we just have a normal promotion like zooming into an eye and then someone from the Black Lodge saying Sega Saturn at me? Welcome to the theater of the eye. What's that? What is going on up there? 
Sega Saturn. Wait a second, 64 rings? Sonic was playing his jump to the Nintendo the whole time! When it does get here, Dreamcast owners will be able to use the console for internet and email right off their TVs with a web TV-like extra called Dreamflyer. Ah, this is just such a convenient way to read and write my emails. <laughs> the hell does it say? Capcom, creators of Resident Evil, the most popular PlayStation game of all time. You know, I love Resident Evil and all, but I don't know how true that is. Maybe if they made a wildly successful Netflix series. We'll release a new version called Resident Evil Codename Veronica, specifically for Sega's new machine. It's a Dreamcast exclusive! Until they release the updated version of the game, Code Veronica X, on PlayStation 2 as well. Capcom has plans to design other Dreamcast games, including Power Stone, Power Stone. That small hatch on top of your Nintendo 64 does big things when the Nintendo 64 memory expansion pack is plugged into the system. The item will double the N64's current RAM specs. That means high resolution graphics. Are you really gonna be blown away by it though? Eh, not really, but you need it for some games. There were only three games actually released that required the RAM expansion that utilized it the most, but it did like increase some polygons and draw distances. The expansion pack doesn't do anything to enhance existing games. Interact has also made it known that its very own RAM pack is finished. Oh, I do wonder why they're plugging the Interact version. Apparently, the Turbo Ram was at least a decent third-party alternative in this case. IDOS plans to buy California-based developer Crystal Dynamics. Well, now it's cold hard fact. The acquisition is worth $47.5 million and will bring some of the industry's best-known characters together under one umbrella. <laughs> yeah, this aged wonderfully. Gex is definitely one of the industry's best known characters. He has not had a game now since Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko in 1999. Most notably, Laura Croft and that crazy gecko Gex. Now that is a power couple for sure. Midway, creators of the arcade football hit Blitz, is currently programming a new title featuring players and teams from Major League Baseball. Midway's baseball title is said to stretch the rules of baseball a bit. Ouch. Expect to see some disturbing action when this game hits the arcades next spring. We can only hope that the baseball players will be able to blow each other up with lightning, or even worse, absorb each other with perfume bottles. Sorry WCW fans, but the Ultimate Warrior will not be a playable character in the upcoming N64 game, WCW NWO Revenge. What? No Ultimate Warrior? Ultimate Warrior. THQ had apparently reserved a space for Warrior, but there were too many questions surrounding his allegiance. His allegiance, aka Ultimate Warrior, is already leaving the company as his last WCW appearance was in November of 98. However, the game's producer did state that the Warrior could be appearing in upcoming WCW Nitro and Thunder games. He won't. Ultimate Warrior's three-match run in WCW somehow wasn't long enough for him to appear in any WCW games. I think the king of getting scrapped during development was Jeff Jarrett, as he was originally supposed to be in the In Your House game, the Nitro game, and the first SmackDown game, but jumped companies in time for him to get cut that are scheduled to release early next year. Stay tuned. The hell was that? Uh, time for an ad page of the video game magazine, I guess, so we get a commercial for Duke Nukem, Time to Kill. A game where Duke fights boredom waiting for Duke Nukem Forever to come out, I guess. This was one of the games released by GT Interactive, which you might remember is really Good Times Entertainment. I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of ash! Uh, 
Wow, Midway was not bringing their A-game with that commercial. What is the G? The G is gossip in the gaming world. Now you know why everybody says what's the G these days. It's all thanks to Fuse. Sony's still pretty silent about the PlayStation 2, but word on the street is that this new gaming machine will rear its head next spring. Nope, not till 2000 for you. Waiting for an N64 version of Donkey Kong? Our sources tell us this big ape is on his way next year. This What's the G segment is pretty What's the P. What is What's the P? That's What's the Point. Pretty soon everybody is still not going to be saying that. Yeah! Don't send it back to me again. Nothing is cooler than finger gunning over to your co-host. Game Boy announces an end to squinting. That's right, Nintendo has brightened up the world of Game Boy with Game Boy Color. You know, I loved my Game Boy Color and all, but it didn't really end eye strain since it still wasn't backlit. It's the same old Game Boy, but with the vibrant color screen, so you won't burn your eyes out trying to tell the difference between 20 different shades of gray. I believe you mean shades of green. The Soul of Hoops is back this year with NBA Live 99. For the first time, players on screen have movements and facial expressions accurate to their real life counterparts. Hello darkness, my old friend. Oh, two. I'm just gonna pretend she didn't do that. Besides, I'm never embarrassing. Stay tuned. Yeah. Hidey ho. Yeah. Hidey ho. Yeah. The plot, uh, as if they needed one, centers around the mayhem caused by a comet heading towards South Park. Will they survive? No. No, they won't. Pretty weird how they ended South Park on a Nintendo 64 game. The legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, ha ha ha. It's the genuine enthusiasm on display that really gets me. Turok 2 features the best weapons ever seen in a game. Bulletproof. Good thing I've been playing Siphon Filter. Wow, now the hosts have to deflect attacks from each other? No wonder they never made another tape. They're definitely trying to have sort of a magazine style layout with the different sections of the video. And next we've got Mega Future Shock. Sonic Adventure has amazing resolution. Yeah, if there's ever something in particular I always thought about with Sonic Adventure, it was definitely the resolution. Sonic Adventure is in full SD! Which, hey, was actually good for the time. The coolest thing about the levels is that certain areas are only accessible by certain characters. Why is some characters not getting to go to certain levels the coolest thing? Some footage of Tomb Raider 3 shows what looks to be a debug menu showing the angle Lara is turned at, and then she blatantly clips through some rocks. A mystery fourth level might just involve aliens, but we're not telling, and Laura isn't either. Oh, it's not actually Lara, it's Laura Croft. You heard it here, can't argue with Fuse. One of Nintendo's top titles is back, and it's about time. The Legend of Zelda. Whoa, watch where you point that thing. And it might just be the greatest N64 game yet. Oh, I don't know. I don't think anyone's really going to be talking about Ocarina of Time all that much in the future. Especially no beta stuff or Triforce percentages. The game itself is positioned to be everything you'd expect in an N64 game. And Link has every ability Mario ever had. Yeah, I love doing Mario's triple jump with Link. The fighting sections are much like Street Fighter in Link's ability to fight and move. Zelda combat is much like Street Fighter? What the hell game were you playing? There are some beta elements from Ocarina of Time shown in here, like the Blue Fairy. Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blueberry. Here at Fuse, we're not about games all the time. Well, actually, that's not true. Well, thanks for lying to us for no reason. So now it's time for that big celebrity gamer section with the mysterious Ken Jordan from the Crystal Method, who actually retired from the group in 2017. I guess notably, the Crystal Method did a track for the Mortal Kombat album More Kombat called Come Together. The Fox dudes called us up in LA 
and they're big fans of the band, and they really liked our music. They really liked the album. And they said, you really need a lot of filters added to your interview footage to try and make it exciting, especially filming the monitor. That's how you know this is a good interview. No, wait, not just a good interview, the best! And they had finished the game, and they had kind of contracted out someone to do music for the game, but it sounded like all like Pong, kind of like, it sounded like video game music, like bing, bing. Wow, look at the back of his head in the mirror. That is crazy. You know, through a stereo while we were playing the game, it's just like, it's just, you know, you're in a spaceship shooting bugs, you know, it's nothing too uh, detrimental to our precious use. Whoa, controversial take, dude. So the truest representation of what we do is actually the way we perform live. We try, try to make, make our, our records sound, sound like, like humans made, made it versus, versus machine made it or you can't even leave his voice alone was this interview that bad seriously this is almost as overcompensating as the nintendo uk hotline guys almost not quite as bad as that but still they really were just playing with just about every filter they could here, and the way it just switches every couple of seconds is a bit much. I bet this would be kind of insulting if Ken Jordan ever watched this, but I'm sure he didn't. Shh. I'm trying to beat this level of games. Why don't they just put the codes in the box? That's what this segment is all about. It's for losers like you. Seriously though, this guy hates games so much he just wants to cheat all the time. Great gaming host. His real passion has always been to make all video game codes available to gamers everywhere. Known only to us as Mario Zeldenstein. Mario Zeldenstein? Mario Zeldenstein? Are you shitting me? One issue was one too many for you, Fuse. I swear I must have come from another universe though, because I always remember this beloved classic character as having the name Mario Zeldin Stain. He's also known as Mario Z though to his enemies. Here with this month's Code Breakers is Mario Z. Derek, JC, are you there? I'm having a hard time hearing you. But before I go, here's some of the coolest codes for the newest game. Wow, I can't believe Mr. Fakebeard is Canadian. Some real pride there. I am Canadian! I'm Batman and Robin for the PlayStation. Just enter this code of the title screen to get invincibility. Remember, there are no codes available that will actually make this game any good. Whoa, I did not expect Mario Zeldenstein to destroy Batman and Robin like that. Just press start to pause the gameplay, then press left, left, down, down, square, square, triangle, square, and you'll have fully restored health. Couldn't you get a DualShock controller at least, Mario Zeldenstein? I mean, come on! On Mission Impossible for the Nintendo 64, just enter these codes at the mission selection screen. Are you kidding me? Like, seriously, are you kidding me with this? Remember, you would have been most likely watching this tape on a CRT TV through composite and have to pause the tape, but not every VCR gave you a nice clear static screen pause. And even if you had a nice clear pause, you likely aren't going to get all that copied down in time before the machine unpauses the tape, so you'd have to rewind it, get back into the right position, and pause it, then start copying again at least a few times, most likely. To get all 64 multiplayer characters, enter the following very long code. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely see the rather large cracks showing in doing an entire gaming magazine in this format here. Go, 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 go. Thanks, Mario. I sure hope no one finds out where he is. We may need him for next time. <laughs> LOL! Now this is the part of the program where we listen to Code Boy complain about this and that. Code Boy is the hacker for Game Shark. Another real shocker, the video game magazine put out by the Game Shark people has a Game Shark section. And wow, I hate you, Code Boy. Guess I'm stuck talking to you as some kind of penance, so let's just try and get through this in one piece. Now, I realize that none of you are as good as I am at games, but I am a paid professional. I hate you so much. Flames, flames on the side of my game shark. You guys send me tons of email every day requesting codes for all the new games. Who's sending you emails? No one knows who the hell you are, Code Boy! After all that work put into a game, just maybe the game's enjoyable the way it is. Play the game at least once without any codes, and then 30 seconds later, 
Go back in with the Game Shark and wreak havoc on whatever creature took you out moments after the opening credits rolled for the first time. Wait, so Code Boy is shaming us for using codes? I feel like you've really lost your way, Code Boy. If you have a PlayStation and you don't have Tenchu, well, anyway. There's the code at the bottom of the screen. Write it down, I guess. Again, this is the real problem with a magazine in this format because, yeah, you'd have to write this down off your TV back in the day and they start flashing them on the screen for about one second. This is, obviously, a list of Game Shark codes and the games that they will work for. If you don't have the capacity to figure this one out, Pause your VCR so you can write them all down. And the great thing here is you'd have to pause the tape in the right spot, which would be annoying with how quickly they're flashing the codes, write the code down, and then input the code into your game shark. It's almost like a normal magazine would make this process much easier. Okay, you'll notice that there are no codes on the screen right now. It's because I don't feel like putting them up. Finish the game for yourself, like I said earlier. It just makes it too easy. Here's some new golden eye codes. Well, here you go. Now you can be completely lazy. Lazy like a guy who can't be bothered to put codes on the screen for the game he's talking about? You are awfully judgy about codes for a guy named Code Boy. Perhaps there are some real self-loathing issues with Code Boy. He just hates what he's become. Hello darkness, my old friend. For a freaking decent time, check www.gameshark.com. Kind of backwards promotion for Game Shark here. Maybe that's also partly why they canceled us. Thanks, Code Boy. You rock. I do appreciate the insincere thumbs up for Code Boy. To give you their certified opinions on the holiday's biggest hits, here's the staff of Game Informer magazine. You have to play Metal Gear Solid, there's no doubt you you have to play Metal Gear Solid. Wow, high as shit Shaggy who can't even lift his head up tells us we have to play Metal Gear. This is indeed crazy like they promised. Tenchu is probably a better game, but it's going to be more underground. Find out Tenchu 2 is bogged down with three hours of cinematics. <laughs> <laughs> This is another segment they get bored with, so they break out the filters and start filming the monitors. Metal Gear needs more gameplay. How did you like that? Tenshu probably could use a little bit more, you know, finish on it. Just the layout, you know, like people like movies. People like movies? What the hell? Since when? I think Revenge is an awesome grappling simulator. <laughs> I do like that the rest of the room did not go for the crappling simulator title. But all the new wrestlers just kicks butt. Four awesome. player action. It's awesome. Killer. Yeah. Forty player battle royale. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's awesome though. It's huge. <laughs> Step on your face, action! <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's crazy. Game park for car. Someone sober Shaggy up a bit, please. No warrior, from what we know. It's too bad. And realize the big news with WCW NWO Revenge was no warrior. You'd think after his match with Hogan at Halloween Havoc, no warrior would be a bonus. Twisted Edge yes, snowboarding. snowboarding. That game's horrible. Like, yeah, it's like the game was created by Lucifer himself. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this segment just kind of turns into barely coherent mumbling and laughing about games, so yeah, I guess it needed the filters. What do you think, Duke coming out from behind the camera? It's kind of it, weak. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the closet, so to speak. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know. Nice! One of the games that there was actually an ad for on this tape gets called Kind of Weak. Love it. Look at the bored cameraman now! Excitement, she wrote! The Dukeisms, man. Heart he's, just, he's just rude. Give me some sugar. But look at those polygons! Oh, wow! Embarrassment, she wrote. But how about, okay, Streak? You play that game yet? No, I'm never playing that game. You know, they get paid for that. They aren't gonna get any more of that sweet fuse money, though. Next time, we'll have the 411 on more new games, plus a trip to the Tokyo Game Show. Sweet! Guess I can wait. Forever. As they wrap, you see the crew coming in to rip the set down and tell the hosts that they are canceled. 
I can't believe I watched that whole thing. Mario Zeldenstein and Code Boy. <laughs> you know what? Get ready to enter this code. Go down below this video and click on the super thanks. That is it. What is that a code for? I don't know. I don't get codes. I'm Code Boy. Buy a Game Shark. Even though I hate it and I hate you if you use it. Also, I'm being boring, I guess, so we're filming the monitor. Yeah. Fuse, the future is dead.